This is the second part of After Dawn's Introduction to Multimedia Containers. For a general explanation of what a container is and what it's for, you should watch Part 1. In Part 2, we'll discuss some specifics about AVI, MPEG Program Stream, and DVD Video Object Containers. We'll start with Audio Video Interleave, or AVI. AVI files almost always have a file extension of .AVI. AVI is one of the simplest multimedia containers, and simultaneously one of the most confusing. That's largely due to its origins as part of the old VFW, or Video for Windows, framework. VFW has long since been replaced in Windows by the newer Direct Show framework, and as a result, it hasn't been updated to support some of the common features used in modern video standards like MPEG-2 or MPEG-4. The most glaring missing feature is support for decoding frames out of display order. Since most consumer video requires this feature for keeping file sizes manageable, that's a pretty big problem. The other major issue is the VFW framework itself. Besides being outdated, it's only available on Windows. That means if you need to read an AVI file on some other platform, whether it's a Mac, a Linux box, or even a DVD player, you have to provide an alternate means to open it. The result of all this is that there are sometimes multiple workarounds, or hacks, used to support modern video features. For example, early pioneers of consumer MPEG-4 video developed a workaround for video for Windows called Packed Bitstreams. Packing refers to combining a B-frame with any future frames required to decode it. BFW passes this to the decoder as though it were a single frame, following it up later with something called a dummy frame. Unfortunately, if you try to play the file without BFW, such as in a DVD or Blu-ray player, you may need to unpack those frames and store them normally, at the same time getting rid of the dummy frames which replace them. In fact, unless you find that your player doesn't support it, packed bitstreams should be avoided on general principle since they're not standards compliant. There may also be playback problems if you use variable bitrate or VBR MP3 for audio. Not all hardware players are capable of keeping the audio in sync with the video when VBR MP3 is used. This problem is typically found in older DVD players with AVI support. The only solutions are to either encode your MP3 audio at a constant bitrate, or use another type of audio entirely, which once again may or may not be supported by your player. Which brings us to the next point of confusion. Having AVI support doesn't mean all AVI files can be played. The AVI container is used for a variety of purposes. On the consumer end, probably the most common is MPEG-4 Simple Profile or Advanced Simple Profile Video, better known as MPEG-4 SP or MPEG-4 ASP, or even by codec names like DivX, XVID, Nero Digital, and others. However, it's also used for DV video from standard definition digital camcorders, and at one time was the most common container used for analog video capture from sources like TV and VHS. If you happen to have a DVD player which supports AVI, that means it will play MPEG-4 ASP encoded by DivX, XFID, and the like. However, if you try to play your DV home movies from your camcorder, expect to be disappointed. While your player theoretically could demux the audio and video, assuming it knew what they were, it will assume the video is encoded as MPEG-4 if it's in an AVI file, and in fact won't even have the necessary decoder to play the video. As long as you are aware of the environment you'll be playing your files in, like whether VFW is used and what video and audio formats are supported, AVI can still be useful. But it's far from a universal solution, and to a large degree has already been replaced by some of the other containers we'll be looking at. Where AVI is still very useful is video editing, particularly at the professional and prosumer levels. In this area, things like B-frames and VBR audio aren't generally considerations. What is important is using a container that's supported by a wide range of software, which is arguably AVI's greatest strength.
MPEG program streams, often referred to as MPEG-PS, program stream, or just PS files, typically have a file extension of .mpg, although .mpeg is also fairly common. It was introduced as part of the MPEG-2 family of video and audio standards. Not surprisingly, it's typically used for MPEG-2 video, although it is also the most common container for MPEG-1 video. Going strictly by MPEG specifications, the standard audio type for program stream files is what's known as MPEG audio. This is audio matching the MPEG-1 Layer 2 standard, more commonly referred to as MP2 or simply MPA. And yes, this is the predecessor of the MP3 audio commonly used for compressing music files. With the widespread success of DVD and digital TV, the use of Dolby Digital or AC3 audio has generally replaced MPEG audio in program streams. While you may still find it in some PS files, MPEG audio is not all that common. Like all MPEG standards, development of the program stream container was coordinated by a standards body called the Motion Pictures Experts Group. Many organizations and companies participate in their work, but they are the ones who define the standards based on that work. As a result, those standards are intended specifically to work with each other. MPEG containers are developed to contain MPEG video and MPEG audio. But that doesn't mean only MPEG formats could be put in an MPEG container. If that were the case, Dolby Digital couldn't be used. The reason it can be used is a feature included in the MPEG PS standard called Private Streams. A private stream is essentially one that's not specifically addressed by the program stream standard, it may also be referred to as a non-standard stream. That doesn't mean there isn't a standard for using that format, just that it's not part of the basic MPEG-PS standard, or in fact, an MPEG standard at all. Perhaps the best example of using private streams in a program stream file is our next container, the Video Object or VOB file. Video objects are part of the DVD video specification and have a file extension of .vob. In most respects, a VOB file is identical to an MPEG program stream. In fact, you can even change the file extension from .vob to .mpg and open it in most programs with PS file support. However, there are differences between VOB files and regular program streams. For starters, there are specific restrictions on the type of streams allowed, which ensures any DVD player will be able to play them. The DVD video standard includes a list of mandatory types and another list of optional ones. Mandatory streams must be supported by all DVD players. Optional streams are still DVD compliant, but won't be playable by all DVD players. BOB files on DVD video discs may not be bigger than 1 gigabyte. Since most titles on a DVD take up at least 4 to 6 gigabytes once you add up all the streams, they are normally broken into individual 1 gigabyte files, or actually just under 1 gigabyte. However, it is possible for VOB files to be larger than that. Just keep in mind that they won't be DVD compliant and will need to be split if you author a DVD with them. Video in a VOB file will be of one of two stream types, both of which are mandatory meaning, once again, they are supported by all players. They are MPEG-2 and MPEG-1. There are also other requirements for the video, such as matching particular resolutions and frame rates designed for either the PAL or NTSC analog television standards, but we don't need to get into that kind of detail here. For audio, there are four options. The first, and the only one which is a standard type for the program stream container video objects are based on, is MPEG audio. For PAL DVDs, this is considered a mandatory stream, but for NTSC, it's optional. In theory, that means a PAL DVD could use MPEG audio as its only audio stream. In practice, this hasn't really been done much since the early days of DVD. Most commonly, the audio streams found in VOB files are encoded as Dolby Digital, a mandatory stream for both PAL and NTSC. If only one audio stream is present, it will almost always be Dolby Digital. The last mandatory stream type is LPCM, or uncompressed audio. 
This is similar to the audio used on audio CDs, with some minor technical differences. It could be used as the sole audio stream for a DVD title, but it takes a lot more space than Dolby Digital, restricting the amount of video information which can be stored on a DVD. As a result, it's rarely used and generally only for music-oriented content. The last audio type allowed in VOB files is DTS, which is an optional stream. Although fairly common now, support for DTS in consumer electronics equipment, like home theater receivers, was rare for the first several years of DVD's existence. This, combined with the relatively high bitrate compared to Dolby Digital, and the fact that DTS may not be the only audio stream on a DVD, remember it's an optional stream type, makes DTS pretty rare on DVDs. Finally, there may be sub-picture streams and closed captions. Sub-pictures are still images, usually used for subtitles. They are literally images which are displayed over the video. In some cases, they are also used to display non-text images. The most famous of these is probably the Follow the White Rabbit feature on the DVD of The Matrix. In that case, a picture of a white rabbit flashed on the screen momentarily to show the viewer when he could access alternate content while playing the movie. Closed captions, often referred to as Line 21 captions, are a unique type of stream which is actually added to the analog video output of a DVD player. They are a special type of subtitle for the hard of hearing. Typically, they include both a transcription of dialogue and a description of other sounds. Closed captions are only used for NTSC formatted DVDs. The other identifying feature of BOB files is the addition of information designed to improve random access. Random access just means skipping from one point in the video to another without playing the content in between. Like Dolby Digital, LPCM, and DTS, this information is considered a private stream with respect to the MPEG program stream format. This concludes part two of our introduction to multimedia containers. Continue to the third and final part to learn about the MPEG transport stream, Blu-ray BDAV, MP4, and Matroska containers.